Hello ladies and gentlemen, I'm Shovestool and this is another tutorial for modding space engineers. In this video I'll be covering adding materials and the textures for those materials. We'll start by re briefly reviewing the information on my forum thread so that you know where you can always find the text version of all of this information. So if I open up my forum thread, the link will be in the description below. Here you can see it sh says shell stool. That's how you know you're here. And you can see the various contact information, donation links. Uh, if you go to post two, there's the learning center and it will display all the tutorial videos as I update them. And as you can see, I'm on basic setup 3.0 and that's because the devs keep changing things. All right, so the important bit is post three the tips and tricks so as you can see there's two sections DirectX 9 textures and DirectX 11 textures to very briefly cover everything a texture is comprised of a red green blue and alpha channel you want to make sure you have all of these or else something might show up kinda of weird on your texture most of the textures are split so RGB is one thing and the alpha is another thing. As the quick example, coming down to the DE, which is diffuse emissive, the RGB layer is the diffuse, which is color. It's all the pretty colors you'll see on the model. It, as it says, it is self-explanatory. This is what you'll see on pictures everywhere. It's what you see in game and all that fun stuff. The alpha layer is emissive, and this isn't like a light, it's more like the texture is glowing but not actually emitting any light. The render engine makes it look like it is, but it's not, so you don't have to worry about it casting shadows. Alright, the next is ME, this is mask emissive, RGB is mask, this is similar to the diffuse but for a recolorable pro portion of the texture you want it to be a certain saturation of the bright pink color or magenta which would be a hundred percent red a hundred percent blue and zero percent green the reason you use this magenta color is because it makes it easier to identify what part you're wanting recolorable and what parts you aren't. I'll be able to cover this in more detail later but that's the easy example to put it towards. The alpha layer is the emissive as well as the amount that is recolorable. You can see this little diagram below. So this left side here, this is recolorable. This right side here is the original texture. So you can have an ME do the stuff of a DE texture as long as you set it up right within this scale. Now, the reason why this is important is because the ME will always override the DE texture. So you can't have your texture underscore DE and your texture underscore ME and have them be two different things. The ME texture will always override the DE texture. Now there's this normal specular or NS. RGB is the normal. This is like a bump map. If you're looking at a texture in the game and it looks like it has little bumps everywhere, that's probably a normal map and not actually polygons. What this lets you do is it lets you take some small details and save the polygon count by putting this normal texture in. So if you're like adding a rivet or you're adding a bunch of grill lines or something like that, this normal layer will let you save yourself a lot of modeling work and just turn it into a texture. Now the alpha layer is the specular 
And this is how shiny something is. And you want to think of it like the difference between stone and wood compared to metal and plastic. Stone and wood kind of has a flat, satiny color, and metal and plastic is more towards the shiny, satiny side. Alright, so that pretty much covers DirectX 9. You need to have either a DE or an ME, and you need to have an NS. If you don't have the NS, your texture will, will appear very dark. So remember that. If it's dark, but you see colors, you're missing this part here. Alright, DirectX 11. There's the CM, which is the color and metalness. The RGB is the color, and this is pretty much the same as the DE, and kind of like the ME. So all the color will be on the RGB layer, and that's exactly how you would expect it to look in the game. If you want something to be recolorable, you want to move it to be grayscale. So if it's going to be a very bright texture, it'll be white. If it's going to be a darker texture, you start getting towards black, dark gray. Now, the alpha layer is metalness. It's not quite like specular. And it's kind of fun to play around as you can get some really crazy, interesting results. So if you were to have really low metalness, something will appear like a satin flat color that doesn't really have much going on with it. And then as you get up higher and higher, all the way up to white, it'll start taking kind of like a metallic hue to it. It's really interesting. I suggest you play with it when you get the chance, just so you can see how it interacts differently. Next is the normal gloss. This is the same pretty much as the normal specular, except gloss is different. So it's RGB is the normal. Alpha layer is the gloss. Now, <coughs> sorry, the gloss layer is more like the difference between a car that's just had a paint job and from being repaired, so it's that flat black or gray or white color and it looks kind of crummy to all the way going to the white where it looks like a shiny new paint job and all the way up at white it would be like if you had a black car and you perfectly polished it and it was almost like a mirror that's what white will look like now gloss and metalness interact very interestingly a really high gloss and a really high metalness will make the texture appear very dark. So you kind of have to either tone down the metalness or the gloss. I typically suggest toning down the gloss some before you start toning down the metalness if you want the high metalness amount. Next is the additive. This one is different from the previous textures. This one is broken up into four layers instead of the RGB and then the alpha. This is one layer, then the next layer, and then the next, and they're all gray scale. So the red layer is ambient occlusion. Now this is how light sort of interacts with the model. If it's black, kind of like the NS, the texture will appear very, very dark. Now as you get brighter and brighter red, or brighter and brighter white, as the case should be because it's grayscale, you'll start getting a brighter and brighter texture. Now what I suggest doing is putting it right about the 50% mark because it'll give you just about the same as the devs models with their textures. Green is the emissive. This makes things so much easier moving the emissive off of the color. So this is pretty much the same thing as the diffuse emissive in that it goes all the way from black all the way to white. So it lets you get more detail where you want it and it lets you very easily understand where you don't want things emissive. 
The next one is the blue layer, and as you can see, it says it's not presently used. To my knowledge, it still isn't. The official documentation says it still isn't. So as far as we're concerned, it's not used. The alpha layer is the recolorable mask. This is kind of like this area right here with the ME texture. As you go further to being more and more on the alpha layer, so the brighter white, the more recolor it will be. But the RGB layer on the CM, the color metalness, need, you want it to be grayscale because that's kind of how it interacts with the textures. You could also go and be a whatever other color, but it's usually suggested to be grayscale because it's easier to understand what it is you're working with. And then the last texture is the alpha mask. This is kind of like glass, but not exactly. So say you want to make a leaf. You design your leaf, and it's kind of an oval shape. Now, if you were to model that, it would use a lot of polygons that you don't need to use for a leaf. What you would do is you would alpha mask the edge of the leaf so it's transparent perfectly, and it would make it so you save on the polygon count and you get a nice looking leaf. But you don't need the alpha mask. What you absolutely need to have for DirectX 11 is the CM, the NG, and the add. Now I personally suggest that you have a default add texture be 50% red and 0% alpha layer. So this means that the texture is going to appear a dark red but be perfectly invisible when you're looking at it. If you make it a dark red and it's perfectly visible, the texture will be recolorable. So keep that in mind. All right, so that pretty much covers textures. Next we need to talk about materials. So as I discussed earlier, <coughs> on the previous model it had these entries here for colors. And as you can see they're kind of pink, but they don't appear pink on here. But this is definitely a different color from this one. Now I've made a, a bunch of models before I got to um, making this one. And this let me set up my repertoire of textures that I just use to slap onto things because I don't really want to take the time to get really in depth with a lot of the textures because I feel that it will make me waste a lot of time doing other things I'd rather be doing. I come back to models all the time to try to improve them and that means that I'd have to redo a eight hour texture and I don't want to do that yet because I'm not happy with where all my models are at. When the game gets further into being developed I'll probably revisit them. So that's something I kinda suggest you guys do unless you're absolutely certain what you want the model to look like. Alright, so if I come here and I wanna decide on how I want this thing to be colored, the first thing I want you to do is I want you to simply unwrap the model just so we don't have to worry about it initially. So you go into edit mode and you select everything and you press U for unwrap and then you go to smart UV project just leave the settings here but uncheck stretch to UV bounce and it'll give you something in this which is the UV editor. If you don't have this window, just grab this little triangle up here and pull it down. And I'll give you this extra window here. And then come to the bottom left. And then you'll go to UV image editor. So as you can see, it gave us a pretty decent looking model. But we don't want to use this as a final because it cuts it pretty weird when you get to stuff like this sphere area here. 
but we'll come back to that when we need to. For now, this is good enough. All right. So I like kind of color coding my stuff. And just for this model, what I'm going to do is I want this base area here to be bright. And I'll have this center sphere be bright as well. And what I'm going to do is I need to assign a material first. So in this tab here, you want to go all the way to the right to the material tab, which is like a little circle. And go ahead and click new. So it should come up with a window that kind of looks like this. The ones that are important to us are space engineers. So we'll drag that all the way up to the top with these little dots here. And we'll cl click convert to nodes material. <coughs> Sorry about that. Now we can see that there's a diffuse color. I suggest never changing this because it no longer matters as much as it used to. It used to be you could get away with making darker textures, but now it doesn't transfer to DirectX 11. So you want to do it all in your textures. Now here we can see that there's something called specular. This is the shininess as in the model in the NS texture. This only affects the DirectX 9. Now the default, I believe what the devs use is 0 and 0.8. So that should get it to look mostly like the way the devs have theirs. Now you need to create a diffuse, a normal, a color metalness, a normal gloss, and add texture. I have a bunch of them made, made already, and I'm just going to make them be some of my simple textures. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the armor default ME that I got over here. And as you can see, all of my textures go add C, M, D, E, N, G, and N, S at the end. And that's how all of your textures should look. Now if you accidentally select one of the wrong ones here, don't worry about it. You can just click on the little folder button right here and change it over. So as you can see it's filling in the spots. And I'll put this last one here. Alright, so I have all these armor default textures, but let's go ahead and actually look at what those look like as a file in something like Photoshop. Get this out of the way. So I come up here to my mods folder and I'll just look in my master pack. Here you can see tons of textures and I'm working on the default one so I'm going to go ahead and open up all these in Photoshop. So there's one, two, three, four, and five. Alright, so the add texture, as you can see, it's a bright red, and that means it's going to get the fullest color it can get. And it might look a little weird sometimes, but I'm going to leave it there for now. You can also see that it doesn't have a uh, transparency, and that's if I go over to the channels. Here you can see that there's an alpha channel, and it's set to white. I'm using Photoshop real quick because it's easier to switch between everything as opposed to GIMP for the purposes of the video. I'll hop over to GIMP real quick after I'm done here to show you how to get to this channels section. Alright, so that's the ad. It's bright red, so that means it's recolorable. Come over to the CM. You can see it has no alpha channel. It's probably a mistake on my part or Photoshop automatically getting rid of it. It's gray, so that means that it's going to be slightly darker than a super bright color, which is something that I want. I come over to the ME, and you can see that it's the magenta color. Over here, you can see that it's a little bit darker instead of being the full color. And that's because I don't want it to be super bright and overbearing in DirectX 9. 
you can see the alpha channel is set and that is exactly at the 115 mark so that means that it's fully recolorable I get to the NG and the NG and the NS actually look way more different than I thought they would so looking at the NG you can see little bumps everywhere and what this is this is the normal map I come over to the alpha layer and it's just gray now this means that's gonna be a little bit glossy but not too glossy so it should look pretty nice alright so I wanna take this and I want to put it on the NS so the textures actually line up between DirectX 9 and DirectX 11 so I'm going to close Photoshop so I can actually edit that and you can see how I do it so I open with GIMP and let that boot up it's going to come up and say do you want to load the DDS uncheck MIP maps uncheck show this dialog and you can see that it actually looks transparent in this alright now I need to go back to the models and open the NS with GIMP as well alright so the easiest way for me to do this is just to go control A copy come over here and then control A delete this because the other one has transparency and then just paste that down come over here to the right and I need to anchor the layer down so it's actually part of this and now you wanna go and mess with the channels well it's kinda hard to mess with the channels with this because it doesn't always play very fair the easiest way I was able to figure out to do it was to go to colors up here at the top components and decompose color model RGBA and click OK and now you can see that it's all gray and that's perfect so that means that I'm now working on gray scale and that means I can come over here and set this one to be gray and I could draw on it hide the other ones and it's just grayscale I can even set it to be red and it's still just gray so this makes things very easy and a lot more pleasant to work with and then when you're done here you just want to go to colors components and recompose if I come into this one you can faintly see that the colors have changed here but I don't want that change alright so I need to export it now so file export as and you want to make sure you find the actual file that you want to export it to and then export you might have to come down here and find DDS and make sure that you change the file extension here just in case click export you might have to press replace now the compression is what really matters you want to make sure that you go BC3 DXT5 and then you want to make sure that you go to generate mint maps as you can see it hides everything else here you don't need to do anything in advanced options so just leave that closed DirectX 9 can only use BC3 DirectX 11 is able to use all the way up to BC7 but it can't use any of the ones prior except for BC3 so it's either BC3 or BC7 and 7 is only supported from what I can find in Photoshop but you're able to do DirectX 9 and 11 textures in this format which is fine so go ahead and press OK and it's going to update the file. Alright, so I come back here and that pretty much gives me these textures and you can go through and edit tons and tons and tons of textures. I could probably make another in-depth video going over all the kinds of things that you can get away with with these. Or I could show you some of my other models down the road 
that use different textures. So right now, I'm just using this one. And I don't want to just use that one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the settings down here at the bottom. And I want to change the viewport color. I want it to be at 1. So it's a nice bright white color for the base material. Here you can see I have it named SC Armor Default. Up here, I'm just going to name it Armor Default. And this is the name that you'll end up seeing in the XML. But you won't have to touch the XML because the plugin for Blender does all of this fancy stuff for you already. Alright, so to try to push things along a little bit because I'm at 25 minutes for this video. Let's go ahead and add another one. I'm going to name this one Armor Dark. Add this little screencast thing here. And you can see that it's a gray. I don't want it to be that way. I want it to be a much darker gray. I'll put that down at point 0.2. And make sure you click Convert to Nodes Material. This is the uh, plug-in information for actually making your textures work with Space Engineers. This isn't normally here. Alright, so I want to make the dark one. So I'm just going to go Dark ME, Dark NS, CM, NG, and Add. So now I'm just going to select a couple lines. And then the control plus, plus, plus. And that gives me pretty much everything there that I want. Oh, I wanted that to be the bright color. So I'm going to go ahead and hide that. I'm going to hide these. And I'm going to hide the base here. And I guess I'll hide these. Now I'm going to go ahead and make these arms be darker. So I'm just going to line select a few places, press the control plus a few times, and go assign. And now the color's changed. And that is to inform me that this is going to be a different texture than this. I'm going to unhide everything. I want this to be darker. And I think I'll make this darker here if it'll let me select it. Oh, and you go to vertices select. Make it easier. That one and that one. And I'll go like that. And that looks pretty good. Go ahead and make this arm here dark as well. Alright, so if you remember, the gyroscope has some lights on it and it also has a panel. And I want this beam here to be recolorable from in game to be the emissive, the red, the blue, or the green. So this is sort of important. You need to make sure that it is named emissive specifically exactly like that. That way that it can actually change colors. So what we'll do is we'll set this to the bright magenta color and convert nodes material. Now the color of the emissive that you make this will influence the color that appears on the block. So if you make it red and the light is blue, normally it will appear purple in-game. If it's in the off state and you make the texture blue and it's supposed to be red, it's going to be purple. So what you probably want to do is you want to make it white. That way it's super bright and it doesn't interfere with the color at all. So it always makes sense to everybody who look at it and need to understand what state it's in. 
so I have a bunch of emissive textures here and I'm just selecting the white ones and that wraps that part up click sign and now I got that purple line there and next I need to make the terminal panel so I'm gonna go assign two new ones because I have a left side and a right side and I'm gonna name this terminal left I'm gonna assign it to the left side here Oops. terminal left enter and terminal right enter so make sure you put convert to nodes material scroll down I'm gonna make it red and I'll make this one blue just so you can see it interacting with it so the left side it should have a terminal for left and right yep right here so DE and then NS ECM NG and bad. And I'm going to do the same for the right side D E N S C M N G and the add. Alright, so now I need to assign them. So the left side will be that one, and the right side will be that one. And if I load up those textures so you can see what they look like, come down here, and I'll load. Oh, I don't have them in here. I do have them in here though, and here they are. Alright, so I'll just look at the DEs because that'll be easiest for me to look at for you. Because it doesn't really change much between the DE and the CM. So as you can see, this is going to be the right side, and this is going to be the left side. And this whole thing is going to fill in this square. Now we need to make sure that it does fill in that whole square. So what we'll do is we'll press the left square, press U and U, and you can see that it fills in this full grid here. Do it to the other side, U and U, and that gives it the full texture space to work with. Now, something important to remember, the way it unwraps with U and U is that it doesn't always go directly to the edge. As you see it goes 0 0.02 and that can be kind of important because I need these to match up perfectly so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go U and B to project from view bounds so you can see now that goes all the way to the edge there we go so now I don't have to worry about anything being clipped off accidentally now that pretty much wraps up this video and it's kinda long, it's about 35 minutes now and I'm gonna keep it simple for the rest of the texture just so I can move on to the next piece. I'll catch you in the next video. Have a wonderful day. Bye.